Unboxing with the boy. 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 Hi there, I'm Brent McCall. And I'm Adam Rogers. And today we're unboxing with the boys. Yep. So today, Brent, we are unboxing the HDM GA2. So guys, Ooh. this is our this is our updated GA series, our gigabit accelerator uh, system. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right into what's going on with this one so you guys can see what's in the box and what comes with it. And we're gonna go over a couple of things first because there's some interesting things on the box. Because the box is a little older. Mm -hmm. You will note it says right there, it's got uh, 48 gigabits of capability, right. but next to it it says 18 because at the time 18 was all we could legitimately test for. Correct. However, since that time, DPL and Envisions has now started doing a four channel, so it should actually say minimum of 24, but the boxes do have to be updated. Correct. So don't get caught up in that number because this is a true four channel, six gigabit per channel repeater. Right. Okay. R12, depending on the length. Right. So I'm going to hand it over to you to open it up. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. So you can see here we've got our standard Metro Home Theater ethereal box with this here. So what we're going to do is just going to simply Wait, wait, wait. What's in the back? Open. What's in the back? What's Show me that? the back. Oh, okay. Show me the back. Here we are. So you've got your different uh, uh, information for it, of course. You've got our phone number here and our UPC and everything. And else, all the course. warnings and all the Rojas things so you can, you know, don't have to worry about getting cancer. Of course. If you're in California. Of course. So we'll go ahead and dive right in. We'll pop this little tab off here at the bottom. And we'll go in here. So Ooh. you'll see first and foremost one of the really important things, guys, is an actual power source for this one. So with our GA1, if I remember correctly, we did not have a power we did. source. Oh, we did. It was just in the bottom. Oh, that's right. Okay. It so you've got your work. you've got your power source with this with the power cord as well, uh, and so you've got that as an option for you. Then of course we got the GA2 itself, and we'll get into more detail about that here in a second. So we'll go and after that, take the nice plastic off. And down inside here, we've got the screws. Brent, what are the screws for? There to mount the GA2 to the back of your rack or the wall or the wood that's located somewhere. Right. Or if you're really smart, you'll get a little piece of Velcro mm -hmm. and just stick it right on the back of the TV and be right. done with it. Exactly. And of course, you've got your manual as well. Uh, that guy there. There's really, okay. honestly, not, not a, whole a lot, lot to know, here. but the manual is very important because the programming and program chart. Right. will be very critical to you in the setup of the GA2. Now, Brent, this is also available in digital on the website, correct? Absolutely. All right, so just go on to the website, and you can actually get that on there as well. So definitely check that out. And if out. you're using a tablet, an iPad, or Samsung Galaxy or something like that, it gets even bigger fonts for us old guys. Right. So, Brent, we have three different dip switches on the top of this. Can we start talking about those? Absolutely. Do you want to go right to left and or left to right? And we're going to start from right to left because the, my right to your left. Correct. The reason for that is this is actually an input sensitivity adjustment. Correct. There's a lot of HDMI cables out there that just may not be the best possible quality. So what do we have here? We have low, medium, and high, correct? Yes. That allows us to adjust for the low, medium, high represents the cable, not our sensitivity. Right. So if you have a cable, it's a very good cable, mm -hmm. like for example, our VLOX. Right. You would set that on the high, meaning we got a lot of signal coming into it. Right. So we don't need to boost that level. Right. However, if you have a garbage cable, mm -hmm. you're going to want to set it to low because that means that cable is not outputting much, so we have to boost it as much as we can to make the signal proper before we even get into the equalization, which is next up. Correct. So we've got our next in uh, selections here are the equalization level. Now, if, I, if we look at this correctly, we have on the manual, ta -da, our different program charts. So Brent, kind of fill us in on what's going on with those pieces as well. Okay, what the EQ function of this does is allow you to match the output of this device to the input of your television. Correct. This is very critical because there's not a standard EQ setting inside of the HDMI domain for TVs. Mm -hmm. There's just a wide range. In some TVs, it is very easy to scream at the television, meaning you're overdriving it, and other TVs are basically deaf. There's just not a standard. So with this and the chart, it gives you a starting. Now, out of the gate, you're probably honestly going to start at four or five because that really is right. the vast majority of them. However, if you don't get a picture, you might not get a picture for one of two reasons. Mm -hmm. You're not loud enough, meaning right. the TV does not see the signal, or you're too loud. So what you're going to do is you're going to back down to BB on this. BB. And there's little indicators on both sides. You just get you a little tweaker screwdriver mm -hmm. or tip of your pen and set it to BB, and you're just going to work your way up through this chart. Right. Now, once you get a picture lock, not sparkles, but a picture lock, mm. you're going to go to the next step. So if you get a lock at CB, for example, 
You are want to go one more to AB. This gives you a little additional headroom. Okay. Because things like, and we've discussed this in our shows, thermal issues right. can cause that signal to drop slightly. Right. And under long-term viewing, you know, you're watching a movie or your AVR is cranked up in a tight area. As you get into the movie, it may warm up and you may lose a little bit of resolution or gain. Right. So go one more notch just to be on the safe side. So what we're saying here, of course, is if we are going to level five, which would be C and B, yes. we want to make sure to go ahead and take it one extra step to level to six. A, B at so, that right. point. Remember, all other amplifiers go to 10. Right. We go to 11. Gotcha. So, guys, that's our GA2. Definitely check it out. Ask your reps about uh, availability and pricing. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can call us on the tech support line at 386 255 uh, And then, of course, you can always call Brent on his cell phone. 386 846 7264. Correct. Now, we forgot to tell people why they're going to use the GA2. Ah, the GA2, yes. The GA2 is meant to take an existing passive HDMI cable and turn it into an 18, 24, or 48 gigabit bandwidth cable, depending on your requirements and the length of the cable. Mm -hmm. This way you can take a job that you did 10, 12 years ago and turn it into a current job to support any resolution, really, that you need to or any of the sources, an Apple TV 4, uh, 4K HDR, Dolby Vision Player, mm -hmm. um, any of the latest projectors. All that can be supported with the GA2 and with the flexibility of the GA2, you can match everything to each other to get what you should get with a minimal amount of headaches. Now, will this work on active cables? It will not work on active cables. Will it work on, on uh, AOC cables or fiber cables? It will not work on AOC and fiber cables. And can you tell me why, Adam? Because basically the things that are built into the chipset of the active cables are built into the GA2, essentially. So Well, and a lot of the cables, particularly the active cables that are out there, the vast majority of them have a 10 gigabit brick wall built into them. Right. So when you hit that 10, it just falls straight off. So there's really nothing left there to build upon. And the second thing is because they are running that system already pre-equalized, seconding another equalizer on top of it can create some issues. Right. We are attempting to build a product to do that because there's a lot of guys out there that need to repair. Right. Less expensive AOCs because just because it's a fiber doesn't mean it's a great fiber. Right. So we are working on that, but today the GA2 is meant for passive systems. Right, great. No, a no HD base T, no AOCs, and no active cables, passive cables, and you're good to go. Gotcha. All right, guys. So Unboxing with the boys, Brent. I'm Adam. Thank you. We'll see you next time.